everyone and welcome back to the Liberty Homestead. I'm standing out in the garden today and as you can probably tell, it's a big hot mess. This is what happens when you leave for two, two and a half weeks in the middle of garden season, apparently. I mean, I shouldn't say apparently. I knew things were gonna be bad, but I did not expect to be decimated by a flock of hornworms while I was gone. We have some nights coming up where it's going to be getting down to the 40s, so I am not confident that they are going to be producing into December like they did last year, especially when they've lost so many leaves. So my main project for today actually is going to be going through and selecting some nice branches like this guy right here that are still producing and putting them into pots, rooting them up, and seeing if I can overwinter them. So that is a video that's gonna be coming up for you guys. But before I start uprooting this whole row of tomatoes, I wanted to take the opportunity to show you the one time that you do not get rid of your tomato hornworms. And in fact, when I got home, I had four of these things and I left all four of them to continue with their merry little lives and I will show you why. Now, if you are not familiar with tomato hornworms, Boy, do I have a lesson for you. This is what they look like. I'm gonna show you a picture on the screen in case you've never seen one. They are large, they are in charge, and they are absolutely disgusting. Seriously, gross. If you see a hornworm on one of your plants, you're probably gonna find it on a tomato plant, but they like all nightshades, so you might also have them on some peppers, some eggplant, or they also entirely defoliated one of my tomatillos while I was gone. Um, so that is unfortunately also a hot mess. But if you do find hornworms, what you're gonna wanna do is you are going to want to pick them off individually and dispose of them somewhere. Chickens love them if you have chickens. Um, I personally do not even like to step on them because they are so big and fat and juicy and gross that I'll go like put them somewhere else and drop a rock or smash them with a shovel or something. They're just, they're disgusting. Now, there is a popular misconception that you are not going to want to get rid of your hornworms because they turn into hummingbird moths. That is in fact not true, that is a myth. They become hawk moths, so you're not going to be destroying some beautiful, majestic pollinator if you get rid of your hornworms. Pretty much all you're going to be doing is saving your tomato crop because if you don't get rid of them, they will get rid of your plants. So here are some examples of the damage that a hornworm can do. See that there's no leaves left on these branches. In this plant actually, I mean, you can see how many leaves are gone, but this is not the worst one. This one actually didn't do too bad. It still has some leaves and it has some that have actually been popping up. But I wanted to show you this guy here. Here is the one time that if you see a hornworm, you're gonna leave it alone. This one's uh, pretty shriveled up, and I'll tell you why. If you see these white things on its back, another popular misconception is that the white spots on its back there are parasitic wasp eggs. That's not the case, but it's not far off. They are actually the wasp cocoons. Now I'm sure, especially if you are allergic to bees, you're thinking, oh no, I don't want any wasps in my garden. These wasps are a little bit different. Parasitic wasps are actually not harmful to humans. They're pretty much only harmful to these big nasty tomato worms. They lay their eggs under the skin. It's, it's gross. But you know what? These hornworms are the bane of my existence, so they deserve it. <laughs> the parasitic wasps, they lay their eggs under the skin of the hornworm. And as the hornworm continues on in its life cycle, the larvae hatch and they basically eat it from the inside out until it dies. And once it dies, they climb their way out and they form their cocoons on its back. So this guy, as you saw, He's pretty shriveled already. He's gone, he's dead, that's it. He, he has lived his life. He has gone off to hornworm hell. But the cocoons are still there, so that means that the wasps are still there going through their own life cycle. And the 
The whole idea is that you leave them so they can hatch and help control your hornworm population in the next season. All right, so that's it for this video. Liberty Toddler and I are about to go play in some dirt. Huh? We're gonna go fill some pots mm. and put some tomato branches in them. Uh, maybe we'll do a nap first. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how far we get, huh? Uh. So at any rate, that's it for this video. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I will see you in the next one.